Alright guys, so I'm here with Cooper. Now, I know folks watching this, some of them, some of you guys will be in Utah, others will be out of state, you know, different spots. <coughs> but um, what we've got with Cooper is in, he's got some dog aggression issues, right? Now here in Utah, nope, you can't see behind us, there's clouds. But normally there's mountains right there. They're probably still there for all I know. Um, but uh, people like to go hiking in the mountains here in Utah. It's a thing, and so obviously, you know, folks are like, I want to take my dog off leash, we want to go on a hike, but my dog has aggression, so it, it's a problem. Well, so the way that we go about solving this is through obedience and through very specific um, expectations of the dog and teaching the dog how he's supposed to respond. Because here's the thing, when we're on a trail, we can't count on the other dog being nice or friendly or gelling with our dog or things like that. And so one of the worst things that we can do whether you have a dog with aggression or not, is just let your dog go into a free-for-all with strange dogs every time you meet them. You want to make sure that you, as the dog owner, are in control of who your dog is meeting, what they're doing, you know, and, and how that interaction is going, because if you're not in control, what will be in control is just the nature of the dog. And sometimes that's a problem, obviously, right? And so, like I say, we look at it from an obedience standpoint. So if you picture me walking on a trail, and I've got this guy and he's, he's wandering around, you know, off leash, and I see dogs coming, that's where I know, okay, I don't know those dogs, and so I've got to put him in a position to be successful. So what I'm probably going to do is get off the trail a little bit, call my dog to me, have him sit, have him down, whatever, and then just kind of either let those dogs go by or kind of shoo them off as they go by. Um, because again, you know, we don't know if it's a good match. Now, if we know the dog and, you know, we can let him interact, that's fine. But like I say, because he comes from aggression issues, we need to one, work on those aggression issues, which we're doing, but two, work on scenarios where we can't control the outcome or we can't control the other dogs on making sure that we can control him. And so it really boils down to two main things. We need a really solid recall and we need a really solid down or sit or whatever, you know, stay put. Because if we've got that, um, you know, we can, we can manage that scenario. Just to give you an example, my, uh, my old dog, you know, he passed away last year, but um, he was imported, he was a Rottweiler, he was from Eastern Europe, he was imported for protection, he was big, he was powerful, never once got in a fight his whole life, but had I not trained him, had I not gone through this process, he would have been fighting dogs left and right. But I was able to, you know, for 11 years, just dogs come, okay, you lie down over there, shoe dogs, because I don't know what these dogs are like. And that's what I want you, to, you guys to be able to do, this dog's owner to be able to do, is for the next 10 years, 11 years, 12 years, just be able to manage that scenario so everyone's safe, everyone's happy. Um, all right, but like I said, it starts with a really solid recall. So that's where I'm getting with this whole thing, is we have to have a really good recall. So I wanna go through how we teach that, and it's very simple in concept. You know, it's not necessarily easy, but it's simple in concept. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna let Cooper get away from me. I've got a long line. Because one of the big mistakes people make is they attempt to train the recall with their voice. They just let the dog go and they call the dog. And now the dog's in a position to decide, do I wanna come or do I not? So we don't want to do that. So I'm going to have him on a long line, 20 feet, 25 feet, you know, whatever you got. Um, and I'm going to call him. I'm going to give him one free command. So free is no correction, no praise, no anything. I'm just going to say, Cooper, come. <coughs> if he comes, it's great. I'm going to reinforce that decision with some solid praise. If he doesn't come, I'm not upset, but I'm just going to repeat the command. But this time, I'm going to hold down the stimulation while I help him with the leash. Now, when I say help him with the leash, it's important because this is nothing, it's just a little tickle. You know, we're on like level 10, it's, it, it, it's very light, it's not very meaningful by itself. Uh, the way I always put it is this is very non-compelling, it's just a little tickle. Whereas if I pull on the leash, that's compelling. You know, the dog knows what that means to come. And so if I combine non-compelling with compelling, we get to the point where the dog understands, oh, that tickle means to come back, which means that soon we'll have an off-leash recall. We can take him out and on the trails, we can tell him to come, and he's like, aha, I don't have to come, I'm on the trails now. And we can use a little bit of stimulation, and now he's like, oh, okay, yeah, I remember this. So it's a way of kind of getting an invisible, an invisible leash. So like I say, I'm gonna let, I'm gonna try to get, let him wander. Okay, okay. Cooper, come. Oh, good boy, good boy. And he came, so I just reinforced with some praise. Okay, okay. So I gave him one free command. You might not be able to hear it on camera just because I was turned away. But I gave him a free one. He just kept on sniffing. 
So I held it down just for, so for you guys to know at home. When I'm holding the button down, I'm gonna raise my hand just for your benefit, not his. I hold it down as he starts to come. I release. Come. Oh, good boy. Good boy. Good boy. Now normally when I'm first starting to teach this, I always go backwards when I teach. It creates like, like you see right there, I didn't even do anything but go backwards. And it creates this vacuum that the dog wants to fill. So my tools in this case is an e-collar, a long line, but also the vacuum I can create with, you know, just create some space with my body. Come. Good. Good, good boy. Oh no, we don't jump. Good boy. Good boy. Oh. Good. And so about half the time, he's just come the first time, which is great, because he's had a few sessions of this. He's been, let's we'll say three or four days here. Oops. Sorry, bud. Got on your tail, sorry. Okay. So half the time he's coming. The other half he's not, and I'm just using a little bit of stimulation. Now, as he gets better and better at this, we're going to start introducing dogs. We're going to let dogs wander around. Come. Good. Good boy. Let dogs wander around, and in that case, he's probably going to say, nah, I don't think I want to do that. Um, and and then, then we're going to use the dogs as distractions. In fact, let's pause. We'll pause, we'll bring a dog out, and we'll try this. All right, so we got another dog out. You can tell he's interested. Come. Come. Good. And so uh, this dog's also working through some dog aggression. So when I see interest, I don't want to punish interest, but what I want to do is I want to start helping him realize when you see other dogs, I'm more important. Come. Come. Good boy. Good boy. We want him to think as a default that, <coughs> excuse me, that as a default, um, when you see other dogs, pay attention to me. Come. Come. Good. And then when we allow it, of course, you know, you can play or you can interact if we feel like it's the right situation or whatnot. But I don't want, I don't want my dog making that choice and saying, I want to go play with that. I want to go attack that. I want to go do this and that. I want to be the one making the choice. And if I have a good recall, I can. Come. Oh, good boy. Come. Good boy. Yes, 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 yes. Okay. Good. And I'm not using the stimulation there, but you can see that now as I'm approaching the other dog, he's a little bit more aware of me. That lady just came screaming through. Um, he's a little bit more aware of me um, and where I am rather than just the other dog. The same thing, come, come, good boy. Good boy, good boy. So like I say, um, as we were working, I could tell that he's understanding it well enough that he's ready for the dogs. So that's why we brought out some dogs. And sure enough, with the dogs, he was like, all right, I understand the come command, but you add the dogs? I don't think I want to do it anymore. But now we add the dogs, and we had, uh, the, you know, the same situation. And, uh, you know, and say, even though there's dogs here, you still have to come. And that's where we end up with, uh, you know, soon we're going to have a dog that off leash. We can call him away from dogs. We can call him away from scenarios. And then we're in charge of the scenarios. We don't want to let a dog be in charge of the scenario. Not that we don't love them, but they don't have the same level of uh, reason that we do. Um, and so we want to make sure that they're, you know, deferring to our reason and kind of the situation that we're seeing. So, um, so yeah, this is the kind of stuff that you can do with your dog.